a rather odd light from eBay that is called a mine light or a mine lamp. And it's a, basically it's a high bay light, LED, and it comes with the option. You can mount it in a pole or you can mount them all together or you can hang them from a chain. I got this one that hangs from the chain. I do have another one that's much bigger, far too big for the bench, but maybe that's shady because I've discovered a really odd thing about these. They are grounded, which is good, or is it? Uh, so I'm going to warn you in advance, because this is the new type of LED fixture that doesn't have any smoothing, it uses a linear current regulator because it's that thin chassis with the aluminum core PCB. Uh, it doesn't have any smoothing, so it will flicker. So here's your warning, it's going to flicker, but it's also going to be very low intensity because I've got a capacitor in series with it. So there's the flicker. It's not too bad. It's a slight shimmer. Um, this is actually drawing with a 100 nanofarad capacitor. It's drawing one, well, it's dissipating one watt of power and seven milliamps. But watch this. This is quite interesting. If I disconnect the capacitor completely, I'm just going to bridge it to a little tiny pop there. And I'm going to leave the neutral disconnected completely. Watch this. Can you see it glowing and flickering? And it's also... Uh, running at half a watt with no neutral connected through capacitive coupling to earth um, and the current just occasionally appears at three milliamps. That would give you a good zing off the, this if it wasn't earth but more importantly with a large number of these connected it's going to potentially give earth leakage tripping problems. Okay let's try one more capacitor. I think that was disconnected. I shall find out when I touch it. Uh, I shall try it with a one microfarad capacitor, just for reference, because you can do be these. You can also potentially make a little circuit that will stop it flickering. I shall doodle that later. So this is a one microfarad capacitor, and this will run it at, oh, that's quite bright, uh, 7 watts, um, 53 milliamps. But still that shimmer because there is no smoothing. But that means this is quite a useful amount of light, and it's quite a stylish light. Let me short that big one microfarad capacitor out. Okay, that's good. It didn't really hold much charge that time. Now I'll show you it at full power. This is where really it's going to swap the camera out. So I'll warn you in advance that there's about to be mega intensity and flaring on this screen. Um, and I'll tell you the power rating. Ah, bright. I can feel the heat coming off this. It says 88 watts, 377 milliamps, 0.946 power factor, which is pretty good. That is very hot. You can feel the heat radiating from it. This isn't generally good with LED fixtures. Right, tell you what, I'll get this stuff out of the way. And we shall take it to bits. I can kind of guess what's inside. It will be the classic flat circuit board approach. Now this has, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's got 12 screws. So I'm going to pause momentarily while I take these out because that could be quite boring. One moment, please. That should be all the screws out. Let's see how easy this comes off. So, something kind of odd about this. Oh, there's all the screws. There's the seal. There is the circuit board. So what do we have here? What are these? They, could, they look like fuses. Uh, we have a rectifier here. We have the little... Um, what is this? I'm not sure. They're, those might be metal oxide varistors. They are. Or, or capacit... No, they're across the AC input. So they might be metal oxide varistors. Uh, the input coming supply is going via these. Are these fuses or something else? Is this a connection system? I think they're fuses, by the look of it. They're quite an odd package. Um, then we've got a couple of resistors across the output. What value are they? They're going to be quite high value. Uh, 205. So 2 meg ohm, if I'm reading those rightly. That's 2 in parallel, so that's 1 meg ohm. And then it goes out to the voltage, uh, limit, the linear regulators around the outside with the little resistors in line. Uh, and they then feed the LEDs. Are they all in parallel? Yes, they are. The whole lot appears to be in parallel, by the look of it. I could be wrong here, just checking. And little capacitors uh, also across the le regulators just to actually limit uh, the spikes voltage across them, I guess. Just take strain off them. Yeah, that's an odd arrangement. 
Uh, right. So the problem with this is that uh, we've got large areas of copper on this with a thin shim of fiberglass and then the aluminium core PCB in the back of this. And uh, that means that there is a lot of capacitive coupling to that. Uh, the earth connection is here. Oh, that screw's not even in right properly. In right properly. Uh, that's It's stripped out, in fact. They were trying to put it in and they've screwed it out and stripped it out. That's a bit disturbing. But yes. Right, one moment, please. It does uh, have... Oh, that's odd. It's got AC 220 volts, AC 110 volts, uh, 6V8C18R, 3V15C18R. I'm not really sure what those means. That's uh, maybe a, a series parallel arrangement. I'm not really sure. Um, are there options for program map? Maybe the, if they're using it at the, the lower voltage, they populate more of these. Right, tell you what, one moment. I'm going to explore this a little bit. Because uh, it's quite hard to see the tracks because they are in, like, covered by the white uh, resist. But I'll back in a jiffy to give you a bit more information about this if I can find any information. If there's anything more revealing. Uh, and then we'll take a look at a bigger unit and see what its leakage is like. One moment, please. And resume. Okay, it turns out the LEDs are divided into three sections. And each section has... Uh, 36 LEDs with two chips each giving about 216 volts, uh, 108 LEDs total, and each section also has the three uh, linear regulators, which are ICNE2530s, no data sheet available, uh, which are dual linear regulators with a 24 ohm resistor each. These are actually resistors, 5.1 ohm resistors, two in parallel to give 2.5, but then there's actually effectively one in the live and one in the neutral. So they are fusible resistors effectively. It's all ceramic -y resistors, I think. Or is that just little plastic housing? Quite strange. I'd guess fusible resistors. Uh, and this will then just be kind of basically a bit of filtering, unless those are metal oxide resistors, which they could well be designed to just nip any sort of transients. Uh, the circuitry. I was talking about for basically stopping flicker. You'd have to use a capacitor in series because if you just put the main street into a bridge rectifier and smoothed it, then these little reg dissipate, heat dissipating linear regulators would get very hot. It would increase their dissipation greatly. So you'd have to effectively use a capacitive dropper in series, which uh, one microfarad gives was that about seven watts and. Uh, you could actually use quite a high value of capacitor. A inrush limiting resistor of suitable rating. Discharge resistor across that capacitor to avoid n tingles. I was going to say nips and tingles, but uh, nips and tingles are both the same thing, really. Uh, bridge rectifier. A smoothing capacitor could be 10 microfarad, could be higher, with uh, 470 k discharge resistors, two in series across that to discharge it. And all you do is basically connect that to the live and neutral in. And that would effectively... Uh, Current regulate it, limit the power of the lamp, and also stop it flickering. But whether you'd want to go to all that hassle is debatable. Now, if I take this out of the way now and bring in the Big Daddy one, have I covered everything? I think I have. If I bring in the Big Daddy one, I have dug out, this is called Tyco Lit. Uh, it's very big, as you can see. It's very hard to fit under the camera. I would guess that each of these sections might be... I'm not really sure I've not cal cal calculated that yet, if these are just... But this thing is rated theoretically about 100 watts. Let's give it full blast 100 watts initially, which uh, is going to be far too much. I've also brought in the newer anti-meter, because uh, the anti, A-N-T-A-I, is better at uh, showing power factor for odd capacitive loads. And that's what we're going to get with the leakage, because I'm going to give this a leakage test. This is about to obliterate big time. I'll, I'll put a notepad in front of it. It's about to obliterate with power. This thing is putting out 300 watts, and the heat off it is absolutely staggering in front of it. It's ridiculous. Not sure this is a good way to go. But more importantly, let's disconnect the neutral again and slam the lid down and see if it lights up. So it is lighting up. It's only showing about 2 milliamps. That's not too bad. Uh, it's showing about 0.5 watts, 2 milliamps again. So there is going to be a fairly high leakage. It's showing 0.9 power factor as well. For something that is 
that's quite strange. That's quite a weird result. So this thing is uh, passing a fair amount of leakage to ground. It's not huge, but if you had a whole load of them on a lighting circuit, it's going to potentially push you closer to tripping your RCD. Uh, you can put uh, a capacitor in series of these. Let me grab my little capacitor set up again. Where is it? There it is. If I pop this in here... Stuff it right up to the back and pop the capacitor in here and then stuff that in the terminal willy-nilly uh, then with a one microfarad capacitor in series it uh, dissipates about seven watts uh, 54 milliamps still a visually bright light the flicker isn't so visible to the human eye but you'd notice it if you were working under it with any sort of moving things you'd get that stroming effect but uh, this on the wall with a one microfarad capacitor in series with it would actually if anything be a bit too bright uh, but it does suggest you could use these as decorative panels uh, using this technique but definitely not in the backdrop of uh if you're filming stuff let's short that out mm, yeah cracky poppy capacitors but that is it. Interesting lights, but I wouldn't really recommend them at their full power because ultimately they're going to get very, very hot. Not sure how long they're going to last. Could they be more eBay landfill? Are they on eBay quite cheaply? When, well, they were at the time. Simply because they, uh, they're they going to fail. So these things have uh, two holes on each face. Uh, and they come with a little pack of nuts and bolts. You can screw these together in large honeycomb arrays. Uh, but that's it. It's it's huge. It's massive. Uh, and that is it. I can't really say much more about these. They're interesting, but personally, I wouldn't really want to use them because the flicker is going to be very visible and uh, it really is grilling the LEDs.